Gonna no do that. Who? Just gonna know. Just a bit for level, please. Yeah, okay, one, two, one, two. Yeah, that's yeah. fine, that's fine. Okay. 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 Uh, budget, Vox Pops, BBC News. Okay, Cindy? Okay, yeah, let's do this, come on. <clears throat> Excuse me, madam. I wonder if I could ask... Oh. Sir, <laughs> I'm going to ask you a couple of questions. <coughs> can I ask you your name? <coughs> 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 you okay? Ronald Valleas. You okay? Just a bit dry. It's nerves. Okay. Uh, I'll come in again. Okay, fun. fine. <laughs> <coughs> Hello, sir. Oh, what's this going on with a camera and all that? <laughs> I don't know what to say. I'm so what are you doing? surprised. I'm, I'm trying to act surprised as if I've never seen you before. Oh, for the just walk into the shot. Right, just walk into the shot. Yeah. Right. So, give me a minute. I'm actually, I don't, you'll not know me, but I'm actually an actor. I was in Target, I was a corpse. <laughs> uh, I, I need to get to do this. You're only a reporter, I'm not having a go or anything like that, but. Okay, fair enough. Okay. Sir. Hello. I'm going to ask you a couple of questions. By the way. Um, tell me, what do you do for a living? I'm an actor. But tell me, there was an increase in taxes. Would you consider leaving the country? Leaving the country, let me think. Leaving the country. Would I leave the country? Would I leave the country? Uh-huh. I generally just get the bus or a train or that. I don't worry about taxes. No. Taxes. That's what I'm saying. There's, there's a 160 as soon as you get in. And then it goes up and up and up. You're taxes. It. Income taxes. Right. What? I'll come back in again. Income taxes. Excuse me, sir. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm too busy. <laughs> One year on from the disappearance of Lanarkshire couple David and Edith McCallum, Strathclyde Police have announced their plans to step up the investigation in an effort to finally solve the case. Chief Inspector John McConaughey hotly denied that interest in the investigation had begun to wane, claiming that his on-scene officers were as diligent, vigilant and receptive to new information as they were on day one of the inquiry. <laughs> Jeremy Black at the investigation headquarters. Mark, 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 can you sign that for a boy? Hey, boy. It's to Stephen. Oh, you're his favourite. Oh, he's too shy to say. You want to see his room? Posters everywhere of you, the rest of the team. Great. <laughs> oh, cheers. Age are you? 14. That's him started the masturbating now. Is that right? Masturbating? <laughs> That's smashing. You're on your wee man. There you are. Yeah. Let me have a bagel, smoked salmon, cream cheese, tomato, hold the pickle, and a black java to go. Bagel, smoked salmon, cream cheese, tomato, hold the pickle, black java to go. Yeah, I'm on it. What do you want, bud? Come on, we ain't got all day. Well, I'll take a, a rolling square sausage, a uh, hold the brun sauce, a cup of tea, milk, two sugars, and a, cho a chocolate snowball. <laughs> you see, there are those who are born to greatness, son. And those who, through their own life, can achieve greatness, you know. Leaders amongst men. And then again, there are those who never achieve anything, you know. What do you mean? What do you mean? Well, I mean there are those who can and those who can't. Can't? <laughs> Ha, 
as a snares. I know. Oh, the bad part. I happy birthday, son. Fight. It's not my kick. I want. What have you got in your sandwiches? Cheese. You? Cheese. Stevie? Cheese. What have you got, Davey? Cheese baguette. <laughs> <laughs> Cheese baguette! <laughs> oh, Davey, don't forget to pack your baguette! Only a baguette. <laughs> Je m'appelle David and my cheese baguette. Do a taxi to Paris for Lou baguette. <laughs> 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 now, we're here at Crackna Fudden Point to show you something very, very special indeed. That's right, Rory. The most northerly phone box in the British Isles. Our friends at British Telecom tell us it takes 17,000 tonnes of steel to make the phone lines that travel from here to Land's End. Can you imagine that? <laughs> but that's only the half of it, Rory. You see... Oh, there's a wee call for us. Well, we better take it, eh? <laughs> Hello. Hel oh, there doesn't appear to be anyone there. There's some wee bastards playing silly buggers here. Oh, honestly. <laughs> Taxi for a couple of fannies! <laughs> Another big black bag full of goodies. Great. What have you got for us today? It's not for you. It's for those poor wee babies in the third world countries. Now, you told me that my presents and toys were going directly to their poor wee hands. Well, they are, they are. Well, let's see what we've got. Oh, here. I've got a steak pie for you. <laughs> well, I haven't got any use for it anymore, you see, because I took all the steak out to hang on my washing line for the pigeons to eat. That's why the pegs I handed in last week were stinking of rotten beef. <laughs> but, uh, I brought the pie crust. Uh, I don't know what use they could have for it. Maybe they could, uh, maybe they could pop it in their head and use it like a wee bowler hat or something <laughs> and pretend to be Englishmen. Good afternoon, Mark Nelson. <laughs> Here's a wee game I invented for them to play in the desert. It's called Tights Golf. And what you do is... You, you stretch each leg to its full length, and I'm a wide-legged woman. And the object of the game is to catch the golf ball in the cup, OK, like this. Well, well it takes a, a minute to learn, but a lifetime to master. Why don't you just throw the ball into the cup? Why do you need the old tights? Well, it's free tights. You know, I want my old tights. Are my old tights not charity as well? You're right. Sorry, you're right. Aye. It's my game and I play it with tights, OK? <laughs> well, have a look at this. Open up. Old, old tea bags. A man who a clever woman. Now, why throw out your old tea bags when you can pop them into a bread bin and the wee babies can use it as weights to develop their wee muscles? <laughs> hey? <laughs> OK, 30 bags. Oh, I was looking at her. Aye, what about you and your fancy I'm man? Fancy man. What about you and your I'm fancy man? man. Fancy Where were you last time? Oh, oh, yeah. Couple of cans. Aye, aye. Got a problem with my hard drive, you know. There's a fella up from London looking at it. Should be done by now. Give me another couple of minutes. 
Sí. Ay. Broke. Ay. Llega. Ay. 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 What should we have for dinner tonight, kids? Fish fingers? No! No! We're having El Taco Loco! Into the microwave. Add the sauce to the chicken. Just add salsa. And arriba, el taco. El taco, must water in Mexicana in a matter of minutes. Ask me back, Tony. All right. Coffee. Chips. Cheers. One pound twenty change. One pound twenty? I'll get you a twenty quid, know it? I tell you, you get chips, coffee, and something for yourself. Aye, I did, man. Got this shirt. It's a cracker, isn't it? Three, code element two, CA4392. Please climb to 35. That's what you are yeah, yeah. Oh! <laughs> I can't even see! <laughs> 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 feet! Unbelievable! Did he work here? George, why don't you take the window seat? There's nothing like seeing the city lights waning away as you're heading off towards your destination. <laughs> I, I, I've got these uh, long legs, Harry. I, I prefer the aisle. You just take the aisle seat, George, and I'll get in the middle. Hey, hey, hey! That's us in the jet set now, eh? I love flying. Yeah, so they are. Aye. Would you mind giving me the end of my belt? Because if we're going to be travelling at 550 mile an hour, 40,000 feet up in the sky, I would like to have the end of my belt and be strapped in. Please, Linda. You're sitting on it, Harry. Yeah. All right. Here, yeah, George, what do you think the film will be? Oh. Well, that was remiss of you, Linda, not to inform me that George here had been offered the post of in-flight entertainment officer. <laughs> I would have sent him flowers, or at least a card at the very inside. How in the name of hell would George know what the in-flight movie was? How would he know? How would he... goes fishing. A light knockabout comedy, 90 minutes. Oh, that sounds good. Who's in that? It would suit you better if you read the safety card, Linda. Just so that we could be equipped if the unthinkable happened. If you even checked underneath your seat to see if the safety vest is there, eh? Calm down, Harry. Have you taken your tablet? Do you know the drinks are free on this flight, George? Is that right, Harry? Harry. Every single drink you have, they just bring it. And you don't Harry. Have Excuse me a minute, George. What is it, Linda? Did you take your tablet? What is this, the third degree? Of course I've took them. Them? What do you mean, them? Harry, they are prescription drugs. Dr Oliver told you to take one in the ground and then one when you were up there. How many have you taken? Six. <laughs> six? That's right, Linda. One, two, three, four, five, six. But, Harry, you shouldn't have taken six. Harry, you shouldn't have. I know, big bad Harry. Harry took six tablets. Oh, terrible bad, bad Harry. Ladies and gentlemen, I would like to announce that my wife has changed the in-flight entertainment and we're now established that Harry, me, is a bad flyer. In fact, no, I'm a pill popper, that's what I am. Linda, why don't you go down all the passengers on the flight and see if they've got any extra E or whiz or crack <laughs> or smack? No, better still, I'll get my own syringe out and put a belt round there and start hitting up right here. <laughs> or better than that, let's go the whole hog and... <laughs> <laughs> 
Yeah. Yeah. There's cocktails on this plate. Yes, sir. Echo Fox Delta 158, please start your descent. Come on, Enough! Please wait for further instruction, 158. Come on, enough! You something. Yes, I'm not I'm 158, please start your descent again. Thank you. Bottles of milk on your doorstep Tell me you're no longer alive You sit on your favourite armchair But your heartbeat will never revive There's newspapers hanging from your letterbox The post on your mat sits unread If it wasn't for those 19 bottles of milk Well, we'd never know that you were dead <laughs> Oh, your feet are fine, Mrs. Wilson. Thanks, Doctor. Where are my shoes? Here they are. Oh, oh don't forget your purse. <laughs> now on to the weekend roundup interpreting for the Neds tonight, Rab McGlinchey. All right, troops. Acclaimed American heavy rock band Purple Thunder landed in Glasgow today as part of their 30th anniversary tour. Singer Rip Gadley told reporters he was delighted to be here. Yeah, you want to see the state of these heat bangers, by the way, man. Their faces are wrinklier than an elephant's boss sack. <laughs> see, they're that geezer, by the way. He wears a mad wig, man. They're just a bunch of recovering alky geriatrics going at it, live fast, die young. You know what I mean? Tragic, sad, pish. <laughs> The band are playing the first of three concerts at the Scottish Exhibition and Conference Centre. All nights are sold out, and the public are warned to be on their guard for ticket touts. MD want a ticket. <laughs> Best seats in the house, by the way. Meet us out in front of the studio after the news. You buy six, you get two free jellies. You're going to need them, by the way. Good night. Rock on. Same old shite, Charlie man, doing that bookies man. Ball head away for a big Yankee, that's me portless snooty, ran down for me tonight. <laughs> okay, sir, I am my man. Here, are you doing it for a fair holidays? Due to a lack of cabbage, it'll be Hamel. Hamel, man. Hamel Demi. <laughs> Hamel Demi, that's a builder, man. <laughs> well, here, listen, man, this is my flair. It's only temporary, but no, do the builders get the mansion finished in Magaloo? <laughs> 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 Remotely controlled. This is a poem in which I examine in a graphic yet emblematic manner the way in which a, a small incident of male-female domestic disharmony um, and behavioural imperialism can, if repeated over a long period of time, wreak a highly um, negative effect on the very fabric of a personal relationship. At the same time, the poem makes a cogent and, and searing uh, comment on the repressive nature of the paternalist hegemony. Uh, it's a cry for female emancipation, um, but particular to the specific incident which inspired it, and universal. Um, sister in sorrow, rally to this my feminist anthem. <clears throat> Man, 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 give me the remote control for the television! <laughs> Counsel for the prosecution, please like to make his closing argument. My lord, I put it to the jury that the defendant is nothing but a cold-hearted killer. He conceived, planned and carried out these acts of brutality in a calculated manner. 
He befriends his victims, enters into their confidence, their trust, and then murders them. This is his modus operandi. Modus <laughs> with my modus operandi. <laughs> what I say? <laughs> I am 18, but look, I'm a mother. I'll vouch for her. She is 18. No identification, no entry. Is there a problem here? McMahon. McMahon, this wee idiot will not let my lassie in to see an 18 film. I thought a smell of pish was coming for this direction. What age are you supposed to be? 24. If it's state pies older than that. I bet the big man must stick his horn down your neck as he wouldn't find any hair. Just traces of your old man's lipstick. The girl's got no identification. Give the lassies the tickets, or a big man will stick his mobile phone up your kiki winker and keep phoning it till your ass gets a brain tumour. But the manager. Never mind the manager, Bobag! The big man's getting sick of this conversation. You want ID? There you go. OK. Right. Give the two lassies the best seats in the house, and I mean the best. Thanks, big man. No problem, doll. Right, the big man would now like two tickets for himself for the main feature. I've uh, just given the last two tickets to those women. Right, pick a shoe, we'll see if your back fanny can untie laces. <laughs> Done, eh? Right. Ach, you got a wee sad feeling when you get to the end of your book, eh? Hey. I'm saying you got a wee sad feeling when you come to the end of a good book, you know. I'd quite like to get to the end of this. Why don't you keep your voice doing, Jack? Oh, humpy. It's a lot of trash you're reading anyway. What? What is it called? The Battle of Stalingrad. <laughs> Shower of shite. Jesus Christ, Jack. That's three times I've read that bit now. Right, Jack's finished his book, so there's to be no more reading. You're wasting your bloody time anyway. Oh, aye, aye. That cowboy piss you're reading, eh? That's, that's worth something, is it? Don't start. Cowboy books have got substance. There you are. Oklahoma Heart, El Paso Tears. That's a big weepy there. That's a daft woman's book there. What's it about? Well... It's about this uh, cowpoke guy, you know, um, he's got the spurs and that and the, the cowboy boots. Uh, uses a last suit, he's got the horse and that and uh... Jesus Christ, Jack, I'm up on what a bloody cowboy is. <laughs> well, um, what happens is he's, he, he's widowed, you see, and he's awful upset about it because the Indians have murdered his wife and that and his family. So he's in a hell of a mess. So he decides to up sticks and go to El Paso. And it's there he meets this lovely, lovely Chiquita. Whose father is uh, in debt to the local landlord, is that it? Aye. And big cowboy Joe, he jumps in and saves the day. Aye, that's right, aye. Have you read this? Did you read this before? <laughs> oh, no, bloody no, read it. It's the same story. It's carbon copy bollocks. Oh, and yours is much better, eh? What's yours about, eh? Don't tell me, I'll tell you. A bunch of daft bastard and soldiers running about pineapple. Wee boof! The Germans, oh, the Fuhrer. And how does it finish, eh? We win the war. Well, where's the surprise in that? Where's the twist, eh? Are you sitting reading the book going, oh, it's 50-50, this could go either way. The Germans might win the war, eh? What a nonsense. And look at your bloody cover there, eh? A big daft yank with his big white choppers and his rifle. A lot of tripe. Look at your bloody cover. Hey, some big daft marble man winching a wee lassie. That's a lot of nonsense, you see. The point of these books is that it actually happened. The war is real. Hey, cowboy books are all glamorised. How do you mean? See, the cowboy books, right? They paint the cowboy as a big shot, you know, a good guy. The fact of the matter was, you see, Jack, the cowboys were assholes. Are you saying John Wayne was an asshole? John Wayne wasn't even a cowboy, he was an actor. 
And he was an arsehole into the bargain. <laughs> Wait a minute. He was in all the bloody war movies and all the green berries and all that. Aye, and what? Well, he was an arsehole in name and all. <laughs> That's what I'm saying to you. John Wayne was an arsehole. Aye. <laughs> John Wayne's an arsehole. <laughs> Aye. Aye. There were scenes of unrest today at Kirkcaldy Sheriff Court as a leading drug baron was to be sentenced for possession with intent to supply. Billy Peaches McGonagall, together with two accomplices, Stanley McHugh and Lawrence Smith, otherwise known as Mental Stan and Death, were caught with LSD with an estimated street value of £80,000. Before sentencing, the judge, Justice Sweeney, said that the crime was exacerbated by the fact that the drugs being peddled by McGonagall were impure and potentially dangerous. McGonagall refuted the allegation, vehemently replying, You saying my gears know the business, you wigged up prick. He then revealed that he had brought a sample of the original hall into the courtroom, which he surreptitiously placed in the courtroom artist's glass of water. At this point, proceedings were held up by repeated sniggerings from the courtroom artist who refused to surrender his glass of water to the court for analysis. Justice Sweeney asked for the sentencing to be deferred until tomorrow and also requested that the courtroom artist's sketches be taken down in evidence. Jeremy Black, Kirkcaldy Sheriff Court. A very warm welcome to the Rakesi Community Pool Swimming Championships here in Glasgow. The men's final is about to start over a distance of one length in lane one, Hugh McFarlane of Abacar Crescent. Lane two, Fraser Dunn from the High Flats. In lane three there, Ali McSween from Mitchell Road, still going through his warm-up, obviously. In lane four, William Hamilton of No Fixed Abode. Lane five, Daniel Gow from Kirsland Avenue. Main six, unknown. The competitors assume the position, and they're off. I'm in Glasgow at the moment. I'm probably meeting up with Tiggy in LA in a couple of weeks. Maybe we can do lunch after that. What do you reckon? That's yeah, probably a good idea. Can? Total can't. 